Well, today on Nation Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about how to grow faster. So if you're in business, if you're new, if you have been around for a while, if you're old, if you're anything, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy the show because there is almost seven years of content. This podcast every single week, anywhere podcasts are found, go back and binge. Uh, You don't have to start at the beginning. Just work your way back. Either way, hopefully you dig it and uh, they're not terrible. At least if they're not terrible, that's all I'm hoping for. But anyway. So today we are talking all about growing fast, and I have to start by saying there is no such thing as growing too fast. It's not that it's too fast. You can just grow wrong. You can grow faster than you're able to because the rest of the structure isn't there. But there is no way to grow too fast if you're growing the right way. Let me explain that just to to start. Some of you are out there and you know this and some of you go, yeah, I don't wanna like push it too hard, but here's the truth. The truth is you have to have a foundation to build a building on, right? You have to build that first and you can't tear down a two story house and build a 10 story building without changing the foundation. And if you're gonna add a floor or do something, you can fortify the foundation, you can strengthen it, you can make it so it supports this big building. The problem ends up being is that somebody inevitably in business tries to build a 10 story building on a two story house foundation. And that's what happens. You end up having this build of business, but not the infrastructure to create the business strength. And that is the big, big kind of dilemma, if you will, in business, right? You have to do it smart because if not, your whole thing collapses, right? It, it's those those things that the business is the focus. The growth is the focus. The, all of that is the focus. But then what happens is all of a sudden their business just starts failing because all of a sudden they can't keep up with the work or they can't keep up with the, the quality and they're, they're, they're um, you know, starting to just suck. They can't have staff. So they're re, um, rescheduling people who just aren't going to deal with it anymore. And then you get a crappy result and reschedule un- fun experience. And now all of a sudden people are talking crap about you. They're your biggest enemy and nobody hires you. It wasn't because you grew too fast. It was because you couldn't handle the growth you did. But there is no too fast. There's just being strong. Being strong is so much more important than growing fast. And I'll tell you this. I'm just an idiot who sits in front of a screen like I don't know anything. But I'll tell you. If you build the strength side, the growth side falls into place. Too many people focus on the growth, not on the way to get the growth. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Everybody that I've worked with, you know, in the private side of things, everybody's like, oh, I want to get to this dollar amount. And they got this sexy dollar amount and it's this, this dollar amount. Awesome. It's a, it's a goal. Everybody wants that. But they're too focused on that as the everything. I got to grow to a million. I got to grow to this. I got to do that. But they don't focus on the side that's like, okay, let's stop and look at what that looks like, right? So whatever your plan is, whatever your goal is, what does it look like? If it's X amount, right? I want to have 10 trucks. Okay, cool. Well, let's break that down. How many jobs can a crew of two do in a day? How much money can they bring in in one truck? So we back that. Now we know what our income looks like to have 10 trucks. Now from that income, we go, okay, well, where are we at now? How do we increase that? How do we get to that goal? How do we get to that? Now, what does that look like though? If I got 10 trucks, do I have office staff? Do I have to have my own facility? Do I have to have like a a enclosed lot or interior storage? Or am I running new trucks? Am I running old trucks? Any of them have trailers? Do they have caps, right? So the structure 
has to be seen to get to a point. And it sounds so weird because so many people are, air quotes, too busy to look at some of the stuff. And they're just too focused on that one end result, but not on the how to get there. And it's crazy though. But if you have 10 trucks on the road, that's 20 people that are techs. You know what the hiring is. How do you get to that? How fast do you hire? Well, you hire as the catch-22, depending on how busy you are. Do you hire before you have the work or the work before the hire? Right? So you have all those trucks. What does that look like? You have to kind of see the steps to get to that point. But if you build the structure, right? Hey, we want to have uh, an office admin because we need to free that up and we need to have somebody be able to run the cruise. We have that. If you can do that, the rest of it can fall into place very easy. The problem when people talk about either the economy or the whatever weird excuses people give of why they didn't grow fast enough is A, because they didn't do certain things. They didn't, they kind of probably got too busy to do the things they're supposed to be doing, which is most of the time. They're also picking and choosing what they think is going to like, oh, I don't really want to do that. Nah, well, I'll do that sometime. We're you got to build the strength before you get to the thing, right? Don't say, you know, I'm going to do SEO once I get to a million. That doesn't make any sense. So there is no too fast. There's just guiding it. There's guiding it. And how do you grow faster? How do you get there faster? And I'll tell you, there's three ways. There's three pieces to the puzzle of the actual company growth. And that is existing, it's new and it's upsell. And we'll talk about those pieces. But the biggest piece, take two companies. One company is doing $2 million a year. One company is doing $100,000 a year. Nothing wrong with either of those. Both are right. Both are awesome. But if you look at both of those, there's going to be a very, very big difference in the existing customers. If you were like, oh, hey, we're in an elevator. Tell me your number one thing to growth. It is your existing customers because nobody is doing that. Very few people take that part so seriously. Yes, I know. I'm going to talk about the dentist clothes for two seconds. If you need to know the dentist clothes, ask people or go back and watch a bunch of shows. I've done a bunch of it. But stuff like that is what grows a company. Think about if you could take the blinders off of your company or the guy next to you or the guy that talks about things on Facebook all the time, which people probably come to mind in your head who know way more than you because they told you they did. But think about their companies. Everybody's always talking about this new customer they got. I got this new job. Oh man, I got this new guy. Oh, I just did this bid for this guy. I got this new customers, new work, super important. But how many times do you see people get excited about closing people on a regular basis? The dentist close, getting them to schedule. Every customer is every six months. The companies that I've worked with that do that on a very, very hardcore, true way. I'm talking 95% of everybody's a dentist close. That's just, it's in there. They can do it perfectly. They're confident in it. Those are the companies that every customer they bring in, they bring in one customer, one house. That means they have that house every six months for possibly ever. Really, really, really take that into account. Like take that in and, and, and see that as for what the value is. If you're doing dentist clothes and you go, oh man, well, yeah, like a couple people say yes. Sweet. You're not confident. Like it's how you asked. It's why you asked. It's, People want to be guided. If you don't think that you're the, the professional in this, the guy who knows more than the homeowner about window cleaning, pressure washing, and everything else, well, you're delusional. They're paying you very, very good money because of your expertise. And they want the expert to tell them what to do. If you were in HVAC and they show up and they're like, hey, this motor is starting to fail. It's because the maintenance isn't happening. We want to make sure that we're getting this maintenance done every six months and we'll set you up on that plan. So we got to keep that running good. Otherwise, we're going to have these big issues. Oh, okay. If you go to the dentist and they go, hey, you're, you have a, a cavity starting to form. We want to go ahead and drill that and fill it right away. 
you don't know any different. Like, you're like, of course, the dentist is going to have my best. They're going to have me in their best interest. If you go to the doctor and they say, you know what? We want to get you on blood thinners, whatever. Those things, people go, yes, okay, great. The professional's telling me this. But when it comes to you, somehow you don't think you're the professional to be able to tell them that. Remember, you're guiding. The existing customers are where your money is sitting. They already like you. They already love you. They already trust you. You've already paid to get them into trying you. It is absolutely the best and easiest way to increase your money, increase your funds, make them happier. Every time you've ever done a job for everybody, unless you got a bunch of bad reviews out there, people are ecstatic. They're so happy of what you did. Like Nobody's ever been like, oh, man, now there's so much sun in my house. It's icky. No, they don't do that. They're super stoked to tell you how awesome everything is. Okay, sweet. I made you so happy. I want to do it again in six months. Sweet. Let's do it. Think about what you're providing to the existing person. If you do a job and go, yes, I got to find another customer. You've, you've lost the idea of this business. You're not building a business. You're just getting a couple jobs. It's the door knocking concept all over again. Existing is key for that. Now, you focus on your existing. What do we do to increase our existing is to increase our new. Now, you have to increase the new. <clears throat> That's always advertising. Marketing calendars are key. If you're not using that, you're missing it out. You're probably super busy. Maybe not now. Maybe this month you'll be busy in May. You'll at some point be so busy you'll forget to advertise. You'll forget to split test. You'll forget to change your Facebook ad. You'll forget to do your EDDM. You'll forget, forget, forget. Oh, I was too busy. Well, cool. Well, then you were too busy for growth. Right? If you're too busy, that means you prioritize something else over something. Now, your priority should be your business. That is why marketing calendars exist because you will be too busy. You will be doing things and you'll be running around and, oh my gosh, it'll be crazy. But the marketing calendar, if on my calendar it says doctor appointment at 3 o'clock, guess what? Everything else stops because I'm going to the doctor at 3 o'clock. If I put Tuesday, change Facebook ad, do, you know, 3,000 EDDM uh, mailers, then guess what? Like a doctor's appointment, it gets done. If you look at it and go, well, oh, man, I got to do this other thing. You just prioritize this other thing. That's the problem. The problem is it has to be structured because the bigger you are, the more structured it has to be. It is why the military, as everybody makes fun of the bureaucracies and governments and everything else, but think about that. In the military, there are so many tiers down that the guy in the very bottom is only worried about sweeping in that one area. The guy on the top is worried about global logistics. And he's got people to do that, right? It has to be the same in your business. You have to then delegate if need be, but you have to systemize. You have to get those marketing calendars out there. You have to look at the focus on the new one. You have to look at getting new people. Once they're in, now you're captured. Now you have them repeat. If you're missing any of those, just like people are missing the existing, if you're not doing the things to get the new people in, you are not going to grow as fast or as air quotes easy. Sometimes in business, you're just like, man, this year was like super smooth, a couple of issues, but man, we did it's great. It's because of all of the pieces that are into play. It's the reason you and I both have eight hours a day. And yes, I know we all work more than eight hours. I don't know. But hypothetically, we each have eight hours. What you do in your eight hours, what I do in my eight hours, and what the guy who owns a $10 million window cleaning company does in his eight hours are very different. That's fair, right? But we all have the same time. So it's not about how much time we have. It's not about how that guy's in a better market or he's got a, I can't hire, I can't find people. Well, no one can. You have to do it better, harder, change things. Getting the new person in, the new customer, the new focus, the new anything, the new blood. If you get somebody in, they love you. Now you got somebody every six months and you repeat. You got somebody that you can do upsells to. You got somebody who's going to go tell anybody who's ever mentioned window cleaning to them, they're going to tell you how awesome you are. 
They're going to tell them friends. They're going to brag about you. They're going to jump on social media and go, hey, finally treated myself to some window cleaning. Boom. They're going to do all that. That's one more person. Cool. Do that 10,000 more times. Don't rely on new to pay your bills. <clears throat> Get that new person in to make them extremely happy so that they can continue to be your customer. That's key. The key is getting new in so that they can be existing. New is only the first time. It's the first time you're using, somebody's doing service with you, they're new. It's the existing that really makes the company. You cannot have a million dollar a year company and not do any repeat people. It's not at all possible. You're going to what? Go sell a million dollars worth of new work right then and there? That is really, really hard. Is it doable? Man, I mean, I even doubt that it's doable. But it's repeat. Now, if you agree with that statement, that a million dollar company is doing a lot of repeat work, well, then you've just proven all the points that we've mentioned. And now you can look at your company and go, hey, am I doing that? Am I focused on that? It's interesting. Anyway, I do have to stop for one second. I just want to let you know that uh, the shameless plug of the day is me. My name is Jersey. Uh, I am a rep with windowcleaner.com. And it's what I do. And it is something that I would love to do for you. So if I could do anything for you, if I could help you, if I could help with pricing, if I could put your orders in or answer questions about products or any of that stuff, I want to put all of your orders in because that's how I get paid. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I get credit for it. So boom. And I could buy more hair gel, which everybody tells me that I need to buy, apparently. Right? My number is 862-312-2026. And if you haven't bought through me in a while or you haven't used me ever, please try me. I would love to be your guy, your sales guy. Literally, I could put the orders in for you and it would make my absolute day. So please do that. Uh, it is how I live on this planet. And if you haven't yet, go out and get the American Window Cleaner magazine. Yes, it's a real paper magazine mailed to your door every single month. Look at this. It's phenomenal. The The rebrand went through. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's great. It The, the new everything in this magazine is uh, pretty mind-blowing. So uh, go and get it. Uh, AmericaWidowCleaner.com. Uh, I'm sorry, AWCMAG.com forward slash sub. Get it, $69. And, of course, it comes with these stickers you see on everybody's stuff. It's, yeah, custom window cleaning stickers. Go get that. It would be absolutely amazing if you did. Okay. So we got new customers. We got existing customers. Now, if you're finding the balance between the two, beautiful. We have to now systemize everything we're doing in order to make it run smoother. Remember, if I can somehow peel the schedule and make it so that something happens at a certain time and it's whatever, I could do more because now it's actually getting done the way it's supposed to. One of the things that we do in Windows or in any business, and you will absolutely tell me I'm right, but it's you start doing your own business and there is no schedule. And it's part of kind of the allure, right? Like, uh, no one's going to tell me what to do. But then what happens is as things get bigger, you realize, oh, I actually haven't done an ad yet this year. Or, oh, I haven't done this. Or, oh, I've been too busy to... Now, all of a sudden, you're just, like, swimming. You, you, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what's happening. You have no structure. And it's like, well, hopefully this gets done. Some of you start making, like, notes or, you know, writing on scratch paper or taking notes in your phone. or And it doesn't get done. Because there's no structure to help it get done. Now, take that and structure in the marketing calendar, structure in, okay, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do sales from two to five. When the structure comes back, it guides you because there's so many pieces that have to get done. You have to be guided because otherwise what ends up happening is you're off on some other thing trying to find the right size, you know, garbage can liners and it's taken you two hours when that wasn't a thing. You could have been doing sales and sold $10,000 worth of work. The point is, 
is that if you're structured, it gets done and the system of it, do this, 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 and this. Now all of a sudden tasks that are taking you hours because you're all over the place jumping in and out, take you 10 minutes, 30 minutes. If I can get more done in a day, not work harder, but just work so it's more structured and more, more intentional, I can get more done. That's fair. You can do that. Now, if I can structure all of that, all this new work and repeat work and everything else that I'm focused on now can be done because of my structure. I can get more done. It's like going to Waterfed. I won't, you know, not selling you on Waterfed, even though it is the most amazing technology ever. But if you are cleaning a window traditional with a ladder on a second floor and I pull out my Waterfed, I will do a better job twice as fast. Now, before you go and tell me how stupid I am and wrong, Awesome. If you've never used it or never used it right, I completely see how that is uh, something. But that's the fact. Now, if I can do twice the work in the same amount of time, I've doubled my productivity. And I'm working easier because I'm not lugging ladders. I'm not as tired as you at the end of the day. I'm not as beat up. So I got twice as much work done and I worked less hard. It's not about working harder even though that's incredibly important, it's more about working smart, working efficiently. You have to work efficiently to make this whole thing work. All the pieces of the puzzle go together. Systemize everything, make yourself accountable to get more done, right? So we got the new, we got the existing, cool. Wow, the guy just told me everything I, I know, I know. Listen, you have existing customers who you're doing a thing for, or maybe a couple things for, but you do what? Five, 10 different things? Don't be a jack of all trades, a master of none. But if you do window cleaning for a customer, but you also do say screen cleaning or screen repair or maybe gutter cleaning, or hey, you do pressure washing, awesome. Is that customer doing all of those things? Because if they have one service and they're incredibly happy, they're more than likely gonna have other services because they wanna have their home looking nice. And you already know that they're not gonna maybe do it and you're the professional. They already like you. Do you know how easy it is to sell somebody new a service versus somebody who already exists just increasing their other service? It's like 10 times harder to sell somebody new. But if I got somebody, I've done Mrs. Jones windows forever. She knows me. She's seen pictures of my kids and I go up and go, Mrs. Jones, guess what? We noticed when we were out there that your gutters were uh, really getting backed up. You got some little trees and shrubs growing out of there. Just so you know, we do gutter cleaning. We would love to take care of that pricing on that. Uh, normally it'd be $249, but we're here. Uh, we could add that on for $199, get that all cleaned up so everything's running and you don't end up getting any water damage or any of that stuff. If they already needed that, A, they may not have seen it. You're helping them. B, you stop them from having to call somebody else to try to find it because they didn't know you did it. And C, they're like, well, of course, you? Oh, yeah, I know you'll do such a good job. Upsell your customers, not upsell is not a bait and switch or being pushy or whatever that all the people out there who, well, I don't call my customers because I'm not uh, pushy. Uh, neat, okay. If you're not pushy, that's awesome. Don't be pushy. Pushy's gross. But if you explain something that somebody needs and you have it, they're gonna wanna go with that, right? Somebody is just uh, crawled out of the desert, clothes all torn, they're going, water, I need water. And you have an ice cold bottle of water in your hands. But you're like, oh, I don't want to tell them about this water. I don't want to push my water on them. See, it's all mindset when it comes to business and everything else. When you're growing big or growing fast or growing strong, there's lots of pieces to this puzzle. That's one of them. You got a new customer an existing customer having the same services, but now that existing customer can be upsold any of the services. Now, I did something really interesting that I'll share with you. I surveyed, I think it was like 72 people or something, I don't remember what it was. Uh, something in that range, not a ton, but enough people. And uh, I just randomly picked a time period and I had all the services. I said, which of these services did you know that we did? We wanna figure a better way for us to communicate. The average out of my 10, which by the way was like inside window cleaning, outside window cleaning, pressure washing, you know, fences, roof cleaning. Like it was 10 services, but like it really could have been condensed down to like four. But I did 10 of them. 
the average I got back out of those 70, 72 things was two. And I am the type of person who thought, man, I'm doing it all right. Yeah. I Every invoice anybody's ever gotten, I have put inserts of services we did and email blasts and all of that stuff. And people still did not know that we did it. No, I didn't do a good enough job letting them know. You're probably not doing a good enough job letting them know either. Upsell is key. Upsell is key. If it's a service you offer and somebody needs it, why would they go somewhere else? They like you. It's just another way to secure a customer. Okay, so we've talked about new, we've talked about existing, upselling those customers also, and just systemizing everything, making it work. But the key in getting your business out there, business versus job, if you do a job right now, so a new customer goes, hey, I'd like window cleaning. Great, it's $100. And they say, yes, and I do the job, and I go, thank you, and they leave. That was a job. I got $100 for some of my time. Great. If I'm building a business, if I'm building this thing, you want to grow. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't, and it's cool. But if you want to grow, you have to see it as a business, and business has long-term and short-term. But businesses have active and passive Advertising and brand recognition and um, being seen, all of that. Active and passive. Now, everybody knows about the active. Well, I gotta put more ads. What if I did this ad? What about this ad? But the passive side is what people really, really fail on. And I'm telling you now, the number one thing you'll ever do for your business is gonna be SEO. But in passive, in general, how are people finding your stuff? How are they getting prices in your stuff? How are they seeing this awesome website you built? Or is your website even awesome? So many people kind of lose that fact. And there's so much more talk on ads and active and active and active. And active is good. You have to have both. Active is you going and paying something to happen right then, an ad. See this thing. But so many people forget the absolute just beast mode that SEO is. The best companies, the biggest companies, the strongest companies always will have SEO. I have talked about this for five years, from probably all seven, but... So many people are like, well, you know, you know, I just don't have the money for SEO right now. Oh, no, I kind of do my own SEO. It's like you, you're ruining a thing, right? So the momentum of a business is active and passive. We know ads. We know that. If I have an amazing SEO company, which, again, Monk SEOs, uh, who I've always used and out of all the companies I've used, are phenomenal. But say I got that company, not a plug for them, but just idea. I got a great company, does good. Not that, would you like to be in the first page of Google call that you randomly get and they charge you a hundred bucks and you're like, oh yeah, I got SEO, it's a hundred bucks. They're not doing anything. They're not. You may have growth, but they're not doing anything, right? Anyway, off my SEO. I could literally do entire shows on SEO because it's... Anyway, so you got that. I got a great SEO company, but now I have Responsibit, also an awesome company. I've known Kurt forever. But I got those two things. So I got a way that my website's being found by everybody. I'm number one. Now when they get on there, any time of day, day, night, anything, they don't have to talk to me, they don't have to do anything, they can see the response, but get a quote right then and there, collects all their information, and it does all the follow-up. In this thing you're building, that passive just got me found Somebody got pricing, I got their information, and they booked all right then and there. I didn't do anything. Do you think that a company that is big is having to answer every single call themselves to either book or whatever? No, no. I've had people at three in the morning, literally 3.15 in the morning. I got people booking jobs, getting in the calendar. That's all because of those processes. You have to be passive and you have to be active. Active is answering a phone call. Are you going to have to do that? Absolutely. People want to call you sometimes. They want to talk to you. But guess what? Have you ever bought anything on Amazon? Have you ever bought anything from eBay? 
Yeah, you probably have. And guess what? You didn't talk to anybody. Passive versus active. Don't forget one side or the other. You have to build a all around business in order for it to get strong. Remember, where strength is where we're looking, not just the growth. When you build the strength, everything comes in. Remember, I'm not going, I'm not looking at focused on building a million dollar company. I'm focused on having SEO that's amazing. I'm focused on having ads that are split tested and are running and are fantastic. I have everything, my USP, so I can tell people what I am. I got how they find me, when they call me, how I talk to them. I book it on the phone and get them. Now they're in my system and I'm gonna have them in a frequency of six months or less every time. That is the capture for growth. That's the structure, that's the strength. If I do that, I can do anything. Every person is caught into that awesomeness of my business and now every person that can see me, talk to me, like me, call me, anything gets put into this awesome piece that I'm building and it is just a giant, giant snowball. A snowball only gets bigger is because the inside was already gotten and it stays with the snowball. Think about that. Okay. Anyway, I'm, on, I'm off my high horse. But not yet. Shameless plug number two. Rep, window cleaner, dot com uh jersey's my name and 862-312-2026 is my number save it text me i text all day every day text me i would love to put your orders in please and of course the magazine i'm absolutely incredibly excited for the new version of the magazine if you haven't yet or maybe you did get it before and you want to get it again or maybe you know window cleaner that you want to send it to do that it's 69 dollars for an entire year plus they get the cool stickers so go to awcmag.com to get that. And uh, yeah, I, I talk sometimes about doing private uh, stuff one-on-one. -on -one, and uh, I think I may be booked, uh, but I have a slot, technically, sort of. I don't know by the time this airs, if, if that's something that you may be interested in, shoot me a text ASAP and uh, first come first. Year. Anyway, go out there and think about your structure of growing faster what you're doing, but more importantly, go out there and be happy.